Hello and welcome to another Let's Play Dwarf Fortress tutorial. My name is Vertinox, otherwise known as Mr. Vertinox, if you're feeling formal. And I forgot to... Oh, I got so much mess here. I forgot to even check the uh, video count. Uh, we're at episode 46. 46 hours of Dwarf Fortress and... I don't know what we're going to do about these goblins. I don't know if they're drowning or what. I can't tell if they're drowning or what they're, What are they doing. Fighting. Fighting the muskox. I feel like I should send my soldiers out there and, and fight them, but I, I don't really know how well that's going to turn out. Are they both in the water? I'm going to give it some time, have some patience, and just work it out. I had a lot of things to cover tonight, and not always related to Dwarf Fortress. I just found some interesting facts that I'd like to share, so I don't know. Uh, actually, to tell you the truth, I got drunk last night, and I started spouting off on YouTube comments. If you look at my channel, you can see my comments. I only made like three. Like, I think the first one was on the Coca-Cola and what it does to your teeth or something like that. And somebody says, well, well they put an egg in a... Uh, in oh let me make sure I got copper serrated disc yeah it's working out all right uh, we can make some more discs here uh, T weapon trap but anyway I'm being ADD here but uh, the thing was that they put an egg in a uh, Coca Cola for about a, a year and it completely dissolved the eggshell and they were saying well I just won't hold cocoa in my mouth for like two you know for two years and then I replied you know it's just like those guys that were in Chernobyl that were really shoveling dirt onto the reactor for 90 seconds and there was it was it was there was these group of us uh, I don't know if they're soldiers or volunteers but the Russians had these guys like they would run in it was the radiation was so bad they would run in and they would shovel dirt for like 90 seconds and then have to run out and basically they still got sick because they the exposure over time was still uh, tens or eight discs. All right, doing my thing. Anyways, then I told him that I was mumbling on the post that I uh, that it, if you drink Coca Cola for ten years, and uh, I mean that stuff adds up over time. I mean even like a second per drink. I mean, if you drink it for ten every day for ten years, and I I don't know. I mean Coca Cola is bad for you anyway. I don't, I know some people are probably fans of Coca Cola, but it's made of corn syrup and and you know generally you don't want to drink it I like I like coca-cola and I like a rum and coke myself I would like a good rum and coke but it's not something I have every day it's like McDonald's it's people who eat McDonald's every day are gonna die of heart disease I love McDonald's I love Big Macs but I it's been like almost a year since I've had a Big Mac just because I'm at that age where I can't uh, eat whatever I want now which kind of sucks. It's kind of used to be able to eat Taco Bell and just crap every night. And then, uh, I don't know why I'm even telling you this, but, uh, oh yeah, and then I got in an argument about, uh, some guy, you know, every time I see on, on, there's like always international debate, like with, like with Chinese or Russians or Europeans, usually Americans fighting your Europeans on the comments sections of YouTube. And it always happens that some American, and I'm American too, I'm not Canadian, so I, I, I kind of understand why they do this, because they don't teach it in our schools. An American will always say, we saved your butts in World War II, which is kind of true if you're France, Belgium, uh, Netherlands, Japan, even including Japan. It kind of prevented you know Western Europe from being communist, but it, it always underplays the fact that the Soviets had always fought more German troops. The more the majority of the German troops lost were in World War II was on the Eastern Front. I don't know, I'm just being educational right now because I love the Eastern Front, especially like games like Close Combat 3, uh, which is an awesome game. If any of you can ever play, 
Uh, they're, unfortunately, the real red mod, I can't find that anymore, which is an awesome mod for Close Combat 3, which is a game for like 2000. And it was like 2D graphics. It was awesome. It was an awesome war simulator. And uh, can you tell I've been a little drinking tonight? But anyways, the uh, the let's check on the goblins while I'm mumbling. I need to devote my full attention when I kill them, though. But anyways, the Eastern Front was like an amazing conflict. I mean, like 10 million Russians died. Two million, two million Germans died on the Eastern Front. Uh, I could be exactly wrong on that, but the majority of the Germans lost were was on the Eastern Front. Actually. A lot of a lot of Germans actually surrendered to the Americans. If you look at the statistics, like you know, like two hundred thousand at Normandy, like two hundred thousand in Africa, but Germans didn't surrender to the Russians because the Russians would generally they'd often brutalize the uh, German prisoners, so they would never surrender on the Eastern Front. It's just you know, you know, you always hear those war movies with punishment. You know, go on the Eastern Front, it's punishment. Anyways. The point is, a lot of Americans don't realize, and it's not taught in high school, and in my latest college history class, they barely mention the Eastern Front. So it's basically a whole set of history that, you know, Americans don't get educated about. And it's a really awesome thing to, especially like Red Orchestra. Uh, Red Orchestra 2 is really awesome. It's awesome games. I mean, the Russians, I mean, yeah, Stalin was pretty bad, but... Uh, I think if Stalin would be a dwarf, because <laughs> he would do idiotic things and kill a lot of people in the process, but yeah, Stalin was a dwarf, because <laughs> he, uh, he drank a lot, he, uh, I think I told that joke about the, uh, Soviets killing, like, the guy that committed suicide, because the Russians were showing up at his house or something, but anyways, the, uh, scientists... Uh, no trading. All right, continue to build our beehive protection. Anyways, my point was, I don't want to be grandstanding here, but basically, the Russians probably won. Well, they probably would have won World War II without our help. Uh, they probably would take into like 19 or 1946. But truth be told, the Russians beat the Germans without anybody's help in 1941. Before America got, before America got in the war, because we were we were invaded on 1941 December. The battle for Moscow was in November of 1941, um, and we they weren't even getting any Allied aid at that time, and they were able to defeat the Germans on the outskirts by themselves on the outskirts of. Moscow, which in itself was a great achievement if you consider war history, and uh, it was amazing. Cause they, it was almost it almost didn't happen. The Germans almost took Moscow. If they took Moscow, if the Soviets had lost America, instead of facing I don't know what was it like four hundred thousand troops, they would have been faced like two million troops at Normandy, and because that's just, that, I think that was like the there was like two million troops on the Eastern Front. If they had been freed up, then Americans would, instead of having 500,000 casualties, it would have been like in the millions. It, it basically, it, we would not have been able to land successfully if there was 2 million German troops. And that's, that's the point, is that, is that the Russians had a larger role than Americans admit. And I, I, I want people to know that. That's just history. I'm not being anti-American or anything. I'm... Oops, forgot to resume now. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm not being anti-American. I mean, I love World War II American involvement and in the general the whole stories behind that. But generally, truth be told, America only had def only took a fr took on a fraction of the German army. Most of the combat that happened in World War II was on the Eastern Front. And I don't know, there's some say that the bombing the bombing kind of helped out. It kind of sidetracked the Germans, but truth be told, it was kind of funny. The Germans moved everything east during the the bombings, and the actual production, the production of the German military increased from 1944 to 1945 until they were overrun on the eastern front, like in Poland, where the American bombers couldn't reach, until the uh, Soviets overran them, and then they couldn't make any Tiger II tanks anymore, the new... ME 242s, I think, the new jet bombers. They were basically, they lost all their factories in the war. Was, war was basically over once they lost Poland. Uh, and I don't know. I just, I keep pausing 
damn it, and I want to talk while claim. How can it be claimed when there's still like a crazy dwarf going on? I don't know. Anyways, I I think everybody that reads this do some research on the Eastern Front. Play some Eastern Front styled games. It's an awesome history that. And I was kind of amazed because I had to learn about all this on my own. Like I, you know, bought books on Stalin, books on the Eastern Front, the Red Army, and the German. Well, a lot of I, I kind of learned it from studying the German Army, from you know, learning, you know, fighting about Normandy. And like, well, what was going on in Normandy? The book. If you read a book on the German Army, the majority of the failures were on the Eastern Front. I mean, the completely lost to Stalingrad and uh, the uh, you well. Uh, and so on, but anyways, I'm rambling. Makes it, I guess, that makes the episodes more interesting. Goblins still haven't left. You know, I think I'll wait till the humans show up. I, I could be wrong. Actually, our things won't get finished, will they? I don't know if I should send out my. military. I don't know. We just basically lost one last time, didn't we? And I'm I'm not mood to lose. I'm not in the, I'm not in the mood to lose most soldiers at this point to a stupid ambush. I can't tell if they're drowning or what. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, there's, it's enough to. And there's a goblin bowman, so they'll shoot. And I don't know why they're not attacking. It's like they can't path. Can't path. I, I think they they'll get they'll eventually just leave on their own. Anyways, I always like to mention, and I conceded the fact that he did say the person the argument that he did say Western Europe. And I was, yeah, that that was the biggest thing that uh, without Americans' involvement, probably France and the Netherlands and Western Germany would have been would have been communist. Which I don't know. I know, like, Stalin is cool and all that, but it really sucks to live under Stalin. So I I think he only lived in 1953. So it wasn't after 1953, Russia actually became more liberal, if you can imagine. The Soviets became more liberal after Stalin died, and they were still pretty strict. If you can imagine, I mean, it, it kind of sucked to live under Stalin. I, I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So that, that was the probably the best thing, reason for America to get involved in the war. Also, they probably prevented it. A lot, a lot of people don't realize this. Just another history lesson is that uh, it also probably prevented Japan from being invaded because Stalin actually had plans for a Japanese invasion because he saw that he could probably probably pull it off before the Americans landed. I don't know. There's a big debate about it. But anyways... A lot of people don't realize that at the same time the Japanese surrendered at the A-bomb, the Russians invaded Manchuria with their army that they kind of moved from Germany all the way to Siberia. And it was basically a, a, an agreement. Oh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close that up and let the goblins deal with the Minotaur. And... The Minotaur has arrived, and we'll just let them pull the lever, and probably crush the armor that's on the bridge, yeah, Adam smashed it, and we'll just let the Minotaur, can we follow, yeah, let's just follow. Follow the Minotaur. See if he actually attacks the goblins. He'll probably attack my hives, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, the, uh, the whole thing about the Soviets agreed to help America in the Japanese problem. You see, 
America had taken the islands. They had island hopped. I don't know if you studied Japanese. I also studied, read a lot of books on the Japanese theater, which was pretty interesting. You know, Yol Miyamoto actually believed that Japan couldn't win if they attacked America, which was pretty much true. He had he had actually been in a admiral attaché to he was the Japanese attaché in the 20s or 30s to the American embassy. He was the naval expert on hand. And what is, what is he doing? I think he's going after the goblins. Yeah, he is. Anyways, Yamato had stayed in the United States. He had seen the American industrial power. So he told the Japanese military, well, look, I will, this is a bad idea. I disagree with it, but I'll, I'll still carry out the orders uh, anyways. So anyways, but the old bat naval battles are very interesting. Because that was the last major naval battles that ever happened were on the Pacific front. They, oh, he's attacking the goblins. Taking out our... Taking out our problem, bleeding water everywhere. He's like mauling the. Uh, ah, damn it! I don't. Stupid. What happened here? And it begins a mysterious construction. All right. Well, I was not interested in that. I was following the damn fight down here. Sometimes Dwarf Fortress makes me angry. All right. He's like whooping ass right now. He's, I think he's injured, though. I don't know. Maybe they'll actually act up. Uh, it looks like he died. Yeah, he died. Alright, so he... I wonder if the bodies wash away. Because that Minotaur body went away. I have no idea why the goblins want to hang out. In our... But anyways... Uh... Looks like our goblins have... All right, let me pull that lever so the goblins can. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I'm gonna pull. Uh... Cancel. It's the middle one. Anyways, the uh, let's make sure the bridges work right before we, uh, yeah, right ones are done. Before we uh, go on, I, I maybe I should deal with that those goblins. How many we got left? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you still got six. Six goblins. I'm not. I'd send my military out, but I know the first thing, it's going to be like one guy at a time. And they're all grouped up there, so it's not, not going to be healthy. I'm tempted to let my goblins or dwarves out anyways. I don't know. Maybe they can haul other things going on. Actually, I need to fix my burrows. Fine. Anyways, I haven't forgotten about the rest of the history lesson. Um, Alright. Make sure it's downstairs has all been... Alright. Anyways, the whole point of the uh, American involvement was primarily naval incidents. There were, I mean, there was a few land battles on uh, um, in the Guadalcanal and a few others, and and there was land battles, of course, and that was actually the heaviest casualties the Americans suffered, besides Normandy in the Battle of the Bulge, was on the uh, invasion of the Japanese home islands. Uh, but anyways, a lot of people don't realize, and one of the things that, um, the one of the reasons the Japanese weren't just going to up and surrender is because, un unlike Germany, Japan had three million troops left. Like, Germany, by the end of the war, Germany had lost, like, two million troops, and, you know, had not, had basically run out of manpower. Actually, the Germans had, like, 
Because Hitler was paranoid and refused to let the tree. They had like 200,000 troops left in, Nor in, in Norway. And I think... I don't know. I forgot. We got to fix this thing here. Anyways, besides that, they had basically their problem was they didn't have enough troops to fight both the Americans and the Soviets. So, you know, as anyway, my whole point was that the Soviets had a greater role than the Americans let on in our school systems. Um, oh, the other thing was the Japanese front. I forgot to mention. For the whole, the whole point of the story was that Americans had taken the home islands. They had suffered some pretty heavy casualties, but it's like ten thousand troops. It wasn't like, like at the battle of Smolensk and and Stalingrad. Like it, Russians lost two million soldiers at the battle of Stalingrad. That that's like. At, during that nine-month battle or ten-month battle, that was like more than the entire American. Americans lost 500,000. That was like, if you can imagine the scale of things anyways. But Americans had heavy casualties on the islands, and they were preparing for the invasion of the home islands. Now, one thing that the Americans don't really know about is the Chinese War, which is interesting in itself. Human caravan, all right. All right, hold on. I could have left the thing open. Uh, it's too late now. I just got to keep an eye on them. Anyways, the... Uh, look at the goblins are just hanging out. I don't know what they're doing. Like, the troops aren't attacking. kind of annoying that they are doing that. I'm probably going to have to suck it up and do battle. Hey, Saffrolite Earring. Jesus. That's kind of useless. I could suck it up and send my military out. Alright, here the goblins are moving. And they're leaving or going or coming or going. I don't know. Keep my eye on him. Anyways, I'm trying to finish the story eventually. Basically, the whole people forget this. The, the original, the most people think World War II started in 1939, which is technically true for Europe, but incorrect for. Asia. J uh, Japan had been in China for like since 1920s. Actually, I alright. Uh, he's going after the or is he not? Anyways, I, I think they're leaving, which is kind of annoying. They should have left earlier so I didn't, wouldn't lose the stockpile. Anyways, that reminds me. I got to got to uh, fix. Anyways, the Chinese involvement, which is still to this day um, a big contentious issue for the Chinese. There's a lot of anti-Japanese uh, sentiment in China because of the Japanese involvement. They First, Japan had invaded, not really invaded Korea, but they basically deposed the leader in Korea and took it over. They also took the island of Formosa, which is uh, Taiwan today. Um, and basically, during World War II, there was over three million Japanese troops stationed in, and that's a lot. I mean, that's that's a ton of troops compared to a lot of armies. I mean, I think the Soviets were ten million still. That's still the Soviets had a lot more than Japanese. Japanese were you know they're only an island nation, but they had three million troops in China. And even with the loss of the islands and they were bombing the uh, Tokyo and the other Japanese cities, uh, Japan was not about to surrender simply because uh, they had a standing army in the field and people, and they didn't realize, and that, the problem was, and this was a big issue for Japan, unfortunately they lost their navy and there was really no way to... Um, I probably don't need to haul all of this. I'm just doing it because it's easier just than to actually look at it right now. And 
Japan lost their navy, which, you know, sucked for them because they couldn't get their troops to the home islands to defend. Anyways, they were kind of occupying China. And the whole idea was, you know, if we lose Japan, we're still going to be in China and they still have to defeat our three million man army. As the fortunately for the Chinese, I mean, they had a great resistance. The commun there was the communist resistance and the nationalist resistance. Um, but fortunately, they lost most of their port cities. They had lost much of the main in inland, I guess, areas. And Japan was pretty successful in, I guess, the coast. They couldn't get to the mountainous regions, which basically was really hard. You know, that's where the the Chinese armies were hold up and I, it was very undoubtful the Japanese could ever ho take all that lands because they just well anyways they had three million man troops and it actually was that there's a three million man army in Manchuria uh, because they had always feared the Soviets that's why they never joined the uh, the uh, Soviet or German invasion because they always feared the Soviets and rightly so and anyways they thought they would have a neutrality agreement uh, would hold with the Soviets which was not the case the Soviets had made a secret agreement with the Americans to invade uh, invade China or invade Manchuria which is the the northern part of China and anyways like only a few weeks before actually it was during the how am I gonna get this uh, uh, I'm people going to complain. I don't want a history lesson. I want you to play Dwarf Fortress, but we're not really doing much anyways, and I, I try to be entertaining, but uh, uh, ready soon. Anyways, um, I had some other facts that I want to share. Let's see. Soviet invasion of Manchuria. Yeah, look this article up and read it. Anyways, the whole point was it was done in August 9th, 1945. I can't remember when the A-bombs were dropped. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, when was this? This was August sixth and ninth, uh, and this is basically the same time. And the point was, the Soviets invaded the, uh, and they actually had a lot, they had very little casualties. The Soviets, when they invaded, they had been used to fighting the re really re well-trained Germans. Now, the Japanese, they had a decent army, but they didn't have the industrial base in the, on the German engineering of, you know, they don't, they didn't have Tiger tanks. Their tanks were really bad. They didn't have machine guns on the level of the Germans. And they didn't have the artillery pieces the Germans had either. And basically, when the Soviets invaded Manchuria, basically their three million man army disappeared overnight. They basically were surrounded and encircled and they surrendered. Um, and here's the thing that I'm trying to get across. The, the bombing, America's always says, Americans always say the, the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima were the leading cause of the Japanese surrender at the end of the war, which is partially true but it's probably a face saving thing because the, here's the deal the uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki I think like caused uh, several hundred you know several hundred thousand or I can't remember the exact like 70,000 or you know 70 basically the, the point is the fire bombings of Tokyo actually had a higher casualty rate than the, the atomic bombs so the Japan had already suffered greater casualties in another bombing campaign prior to the atomic bombs and basically the Soviet invasion basically destroyed their th their last hope of defense which was their three million man army and the basically the army surrendered and was completely obliterated I think the Kumatang or Kumatang army as they called it uh, basically had disappeared overnight and at that point, the Japanese knew that it was, you know, that was the final nail in the coffin. They no longer had an army to fight any, or to fight the Americans with anymore. Even if they couldn't get them back to the islands, they could still hold out in China for several more years, you know. I mean, basically, we got a fully, I don't know, it was, the Soviets completely obliterated them with their, 
their massive, you know, the Soviets had like 10,000 tanks, basically, at their disposal. Like Americans, I don't know, Americans had like 8,000 or something, but the Soviets had, and, and the truth be told, the American tanks weren't really that great if you talk to any, uh, any anybody any historian basically compared I mean they were fast they were agile but compared to a tiger tank they were n nowhere near you know a tiger tank would usually on average would kill like 20 or 10 not that many but probably in an engagement it would kill 10 American tanks and then the, the, the tiger tank would probably walk the reason the tiger tank was destroyed was because an American bomber or basically ran out of fuel not because the American tanks actually defeated it um, Panther tanks, on the other hand, uh, were had weak side armor, so they they were often defeated by the uh, Americans uh, a lot more than the Tiger. The Tigers were completely, and the Tiger two were were god awful. They were they would scare the bejesus out of American tankers. They were just horrible, and they nicknamed a lot of the tanks Bronson Lighters. If you haven't heard of history, um, and the the tanks the Americans donated the Soviets were called I think coffins for five brothers. <laughs> Actually, I think it was the Churchill tank was called the coffin for five brothers uh, by the Soviets because <laughs> they were German tanks were just not. And and if you ever play Red Orchestra two, I think that's the biggest complaint is that the fact that the German tanks outclassed the Soviet tanks um, by a long shot because of certain issues and. They made the game more realistic than actually uh, fun, <laughs> I guess, and that is why German tanks always beat the Soviet tanks in the game Red Orchestra 2. Uh, why can't we trade? Oh, the broker is sleeping. Anyways, the but the other point was the Soviet tanks were actually a lot better than the American tanks. So they had they had a, were diesel sloped engine T-34s. Actually, I think we were using T-85s by the end of the war, which is an 85 millimeter versus the American 75 millimeter short barreled um, which had a hard enough time defeating Soviet armor and I think they were just released the Stalin tank as they called it uh, I gotta switch this noble here which is another I mean this is why I love history like the Soviet Stalin tank was basically the uh, answer to the uh, uh, we gotta make high boots uh, uh, what am I doing? Oh, we're changing broker. Anyway, the Soviet uh, Stalin tank was basically the answer to the the Tiger II, which is basically light years beyond everything else. It was just I, Tiger IIs would basically wipe the battlefield clean. Their main part of his problem was they could be bombed easily, and they ran out of gas. Uh, unfortunately, they were they they ran out of gas too quickly, and they just you know. Most of the Tiger II casualties were abandoned tanks. All right, Tiger II, and we need to make. Uh, unfortunately, in Red Orchestra Two, they don't have Tiger II tanks. They don't even have Tiger tanks. Unfortunately, it was it was basically Stalingrad. Uh, era which was 1942 which Germans didn't have their best tanks in the war by then uh, the Tiger II actually the Tiger tank came out during Stalingrad which and it wasn't wasn't actually in Stalingrad they actually used some Tiger tanks to actually try to relieve the Stalingrad encirclement um, but they never I think they had mechanical problems and they didn't make it uh, we need to make weapon racks I'm knowing I don't have to do that. So how's everybody doing tonight? I hopefully I haven't bored you with my history lesson. Anyway, my point was that um, even though America did have a gr good involvement in World War II, they had, I mean, there was I, I respect all the loss of life by the American our military uh, servicemen and all their sacrifices. But the truth of the matter is that America didn't win the war by themselves. There was no, it's, when Americans go on forum posts and make the ignorant comments that we saved you, um, we saved your, I don't know, it's its not not completely true. It's, it's a little, it's more like without both allies and Russians involvement, they won the war together. And without the Soviet sacrifices, without the American sacrifices, the war would have not been won. I mean, basically, if it, hadn't, if it hadn't been America, America probably still would have won the war if 
the Soviets had lost early on. I mean, well, uh, well, that's kind of a big if. Americans would have a really hard time landing in Europe, and with two million men freed up to, I think the Germans had a lot more than two million men, I, but that was the. That's how many men they had on the. I think that's how many men they lost in the Eastern Front. I don't know how many men they had, but they had a lot. But uh, I don't. I don't think the Americans would have an easier time, and the Germans would have had a lot more resources to actually. They would have built the jet bombers. They would have built you know a lot more Tiger II tanks. They would use the Tiger II tanks they had on the Eastern Front and use them on the Western Front, and that would. American tanks would have been pretty much obliterated. So it's 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 probably best to say that without the Soviet involvement and there's in the Soviet Eastern Front, America may have not they may have not won the uh, Western Front because um, it's hard to say, it's hard to say if 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 America could have won the war by themselves if there were no Soviets because they might have but it would have been a lot more casualties it would have been like over a million casualties probably i'm just it's a big what if you can't really say like what if because unfortunately i mean that's the fun thing about history simulations like hearts of iron 3 that's the that's the one that's the one game i want to do a let's play of but i'm going to wait till they do the new dlc which is uh, their finest hour um okay i forgot uh, trade and we'll trade. Anyways, the finest hour is the new Hearts of Iron three. Just look it up. Hearts of Iron three. I'm sure if you play, uh, if you play Dwarf Fortress, you'll probably like. I'm gonna just take a sip of this beer before I go dry. Hearts of Iron three is a very uh, strategy oriented game. It's basically World War two, and it's a simulator. You basically can play any nation, and you can play like some South American country if you like. Uh, it's hard to play South America because the United States always gets involved when you try to build up a invade other countries. Unfortunately we don't have lots of stuff to trade. Uh, do we want any of these? Gander. What did I want? I wanted pigs and I didn't want Kevy boar. I didn't want mule. Sewer beer. We want we want some alcohol. Sewer brew, strawberry wine. Anyways, uh, continue on. I'll probably do a let's play. The next let's play I do will be a Hearts of Iron, but I'm gonna wait a few months. Actually, I don't think it's gonna be a few months, but the Finest Hour is going to be out soon. Because usually, once they announce it, there it's like they had the Sword of Islam uh, DLC announced for Crusader Kings 2. Uh, I don't. I thought about doing a Let's Play for Crusader Kings 2, but there's so many Let's... They had a lot of Let's Plays when they were doing the... Uh, when they were doing the uh, beta, they actually gave a, uh, Crusader Kings 2. I was actually in the... My name is actually in Crusader Kings 2 because I was a beta tester. Uh, they gave a lot of beta testers the ability to do Let's Plays. I did not do it at that time because... Uh, I don't know why. I just... I think I was actually the beta closed beta, which meant I couldn't uh, talk about it. Um, and I think that's all past now. Hopefully it is. I, I think you can tell. I think you can tell because my name's actually in the uh, credits for Crusader Kings. That's kind of awesome, actually. Have your name in the credits of a video game that's internationally released. But there were like 200 beta testers, so it's not. And it's not like. Uh, it's not like. Like I'm awesome. I just I reported about like five bugs that got fixed, which I'm kind of proud of, because I actually did change the game based on my uh, reports. Because there were some major bugs that I ran into. I can't even remember what they were now, but they were very game gameplay annoying, and I'm very talkative tonight. I don't know why. I just I've been drinking a few beers, but I hate that. Like some episodes, I'm just like, uh, and other episodes, like I'm yay. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the episodes that are like really dull. And if you watch this far, you can, you know, I have good episodes and bad episodes. And I don't. I don't think we've got any. Okay, cool. I thought we weren't gonna get any uh, clothes, which kind of would suck. 
anyways, the whole point of Crusader Kings, uh, Paradox Interactive made Crusader Kings 2, which I didn't do a Let's Play of, because by the time I got to start working with Let's Plays, I, there were so many made of, of uh, Crusader Kings 2, there's no point in doing it, but um, there are Let's Plays of 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 uh, oh, what am I thinking? Hearts of Iron Three, which basically is a World War Two simulator. Basically, you can you can play as any nation that's. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of more leather uh, than anything else in there. Basically, it's a let's uh, let's take some of this junk food. Anyways, it's a World War Two simulator. You can play any nation from 1936 to 1948. And you can do like a what if Germany defeated the Soviets, what if the Americans invaded early, or J what if Japan never attacked in America, or something like that. And there's a lot of issues with the game, and that's why. I, and there was no one ever did a let's play of for the motherland, which I was kind of thought about doing a DS era. I think I'm saying that right. Mod, it's a really good mod. Uh, for and it's actually a paid mod, but you can get it for free. But I recommend paying it because it's like 99 cents, and it helps the developers. Uh, it helps. It's not a uh, paradox developer. It's actually a third party that made the mod, and they made a lot of cool graphics for the German army. They did one for the United States too, which is kind of cool, like the unique units for the United States armies and stuff. But anyways, uh, I always play as Germany just because. That's the big what ifs, you know. What if Germany defeated the Soviets? And that's always the hard thing in the game is actually defeating the Soviets. Um, believe it or not, it wasn't. Basically, Hitler said, you know, kick the door down, the whole rotten building will fall. But it wasn't wasn't like that. The Soviets put a lot a lot harder fight, and it's always it's always hard to beat the Soviets in hearts of, for the motherland or the one point since the one point oh six patch. It was used to be able to actually invade like. In Hearts of Iron 1, I basically defeated uh, Soviet Union as Turkey, which was r ridiculous. They kind of fixed that in the later, the uh, later, ver later releases of the game. Uh, it made the Soviets a lot harder to beat. I mean, it's still easy for the if you're a player to actually defeat whoever you're fighting against, because the AI does really dumb things, unfortunately, on occasion. Um, but anyways, I thought about doing a Let's Play for the Motherland. Um, but they announced the DLC, which, uh, like I mentioned, the Sword of Islam was only like two months. They announced it in like two months later. Uh, oops, am I? Two months later, then they released it. And I don't want the cheese. Let's see if we got anything to sell. Uh, mugs and crap clothes. Anyways, I, I think if you like Dwarf Fortress, you would like Hearts of Iron 3. I'd probably, well, you still got to buy the DLCs. Unfortunately, it's going to be like 40 bucks with all the, they may have a deal on the, uh, to get all the DLCs when it comes out. Because unfortunately, the DLCs are cumulative in order to um, get all the, to, to get the latest DLC, you have to d buy the previous versions. And since I've already bought them, then it's really not an issue. But for somebody starting out, going from Dwarf Fortress to a paid game, I and mean, if you really like World War II, I'd recommend it just just because. And I recommend you well play first vanilla without the mods, and then once you've got used to it, then maybe get like a Dis Ares, which is basically uh, I think it's Dis Ares, Gotham, Darman, and Rung. Um, you know the uh, the opera, the uh, Wagner opera. Uh, basically, there's a German. Da, 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 da. Kill the rabbit! Kill the rabbit! Anyways, it's um, that that opera, the uh, it's a German opera. Basically, it's it was kind of like the uh, you know German kind of theme songs at the time. But anyways, the uh, it's a really good simulator. Basically, you can build armies, build you know so like infantry units, tank units. You research uh, different technologies based on the uh, era, um, and you can decide when to choose when to attack. I mean, I always do the historical method. Like, you know, if I'm playing Germany, you know, you an it's easy to annex Austria and Czechoslovakia, just like you did historically, like uh, before the war. It was basically a political pushover to the annex of Austria and whatever. But if you study history, you know what I'm talking about. But and then you can attack Poland, which I always do historically around 1939, 
and then uh, I guess I should be telling you this when I'm actually doing the let's play and then invade you know France then Norway then uh, then I invade the Soviet Union because basically the Soviets they used to be that the you didn't like you could get into alliance with the Soviets and basically not fight them in the game but they made it so two things happen either if you invade London as soon as you invade London and take a port city the Soviets will declare war you know, because you know the, your pants are down you most of your soldiers are invading England and the Soviet army invades and then you you know you're probably gonna lose at that point unless you fake the invasion which some people do they just like drop one one paratrooper into the uh, so into the English harbor and then basically the Soviets will attack and I don't know if you're gonna do that you might as well attack the Soviets though I mean there's no there's no point in just faking it just to get the Soviets just attack the Soviets first and then you got like the blitzkrieg advantage I think which that's the little stat you get if you attack first and the Soviets eventually get the for the motherland stat which basically gives their troops reinforcement bonuses and stuff like that to help them for it's kinda like the patriotic war they basically are all riled, riled up to fight the Germans off their motherland uh, which was a very like you talk to any Russian and they're, they're still like very patriotic about that World War II of course if you, most Russian gamers that I've talked to online have They'll tell you they won the war hands down by themselves without any American involvement. Just like Americans will say uh, that they won the war without the Soviets. You know, it wasn't true. They both, the both, both sides had a great deal of involvement. But uh, I don't know. That was my point in the earlier rant. It was. It's more like half and half. All right. Let's give more of this crap. How much? Oh, we don't need all that crap. All right. Uh, I probably gave him too much, but I wasn't paying attention. All right. We need to. What do we need to do? We need to make cloth. And tonight I'm actually drinking cloth dress. Oops. Cloth sock. Alright, so we got enough cloth. I guess from the elves. So, um, I actually need to make some leather uh, shoe tin. Anyways, um, if you're not sure about Hearts of Iron 3, I'll probably do a Let's Play uh, of that. Hopefully, uh, oh crap, I have probably ran way over in time. I don't know, I'm going to keep going. This is probably a long episode. Uh, leather trousers. Uh, leather dress. Imagine leather dresses, kind of like from the Matrix or something. I don't know. I've just spilled way over time, and I, hopefully I got my... And I actually got more more to talk about, actually. I meant to talk about other things. Actually, I'm uh, drinking, and I haven't really drunk much of it. I'm kind of sobering up now. I'm drinking a Baltic Porter, which... Uh, the Baltica Breweries. Uh, it's number six out of their number, which is a nice Russian Porter. And actually, the other thing I want to mention is I'm working on my home brewery. Let's make sure that Ford is going on. Uh, did they did they leave? Yeah, they left. All right. So we're safe, and we can turn off our alerts. And so that's what I'm drinking tonight. I don't know if a lot of you are drinkers. I know I got ragged on that with that one die, but uh, I don't know. Dwarves drink a lot, so if you understand alcohol drinking, you understand dwarves, I think. And they like multitudes of alcohol. They don't like to drink one single thing. They don't want to drink just beer. They want to drink rum. They want to drink mead. They want to drink everything. And the more variety of beers that alcohols you have, the happier dwarves are. And the blue arrows tell me that we got dwarves that are drunk. Why is the planter dying of thirst? Oh, that dude. All right, the dude that we walled in. Was that uh, Alath? He went berserk. I, instead of killing them, we just put him down. So much for his dreams of making some item. 
Now all your stuff will be used by other people. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Everybody, all the dwarves want is socks. But anyways, I'm drinking a Baltica Porter. It's B-A-L-T-I-K-A. -A. And let's destroy the... I hope this episode actually records. I'll be upset if... I'll be, like, super depressed if this episode does not record right. And so it's or the sound cuts out or something horrible like that. I will just be depressed. Because I talked a lot. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. Ooh, remove construction at hand. Alright, remove that so we get the stuff. And we have ample coffins. Yeah. Ample coffins and the doors let down. Alright. Uh, so they're going to fix all that up. Anyways, um... I meant to mention that because that's what I was drinking. And I actually only have two beers tonight. Because I went out to the homebrew place and I got two bottles. That's another dwarvy thing that I like to want to talk about. Is just that I uh, had tried the Amon, Amon Marth, which is this video, which basically Amon Amarth. You know, you can find that, read it, pause it, read it, whatever. How to make your own mead with. Uh, milk jugs. Basically it was distilled water with balloons and I'm trying that. Before that happened and I realized I didn't use enough sugar or honey because I only used two pounds and the video actually says, specifically said three pounds and for whatever reason I kind of thought they said two. So they're not as deep honeyed as this one which I actually just went out today, got the bottles and I've used an eraser. This, you can erase that, it's not a permanent marker. That's the date, 9 2012 I can drink out of this. But uh, basically I'm brewing my, this is well, this is just honey and water, honey and water. But I actually put uh, honey and raisins in this one. And this one over here, the dark purple, which is basically, I used two cans of, of, uh, of Welch's concentrate. And the recipe usually calls for either, you know, four cans of concentrate or two cans of concentrate and two cups of sugar. But I use three pounds of honey, which hopefully will make it like a nice mead and wine combination, which I like a wine-mead hybrid. Because um, honey by itself fermented tastes completely different than wine. And that's why I always I like to play along and give my dwarves mead. And we're out of mead. Do they make... They're still making mead. Alright. So, our dwarves are making mead. And there was two other things I wanted to mention about talking about alcohol, which another history lesson. I'm sure if you like Dwarf Fortress, you like that kind of thing. Um, Selim, the thing. The whole thing about Crusader Kings, there was a, uh, one person said, um, I have a Muslim ruler that it's a drunkard, and I don't think that's historical. And then somebody said, well, there were historical mu mu uh, uh, Muslim drunkards, uh, especially the rulers. This guy was Selim II of the Ottoman Empire, kind of out of the time frame of Crusader Kings. Uh, Crusader Kings ends in 1453, the fall of Constanti Constantinople. Um, and this guy was in like 1424 to 1475. He was known as Selim the Sot or Selim the Drunkard. Uh, he was the first uh, Sultan of the. Oh, not Sultan. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Sultan. Sultan. Uh, he was. I, don't, I forget what the, if they're Sultans of the. Uh, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 5066 from his death. Basically, when he became in power, he basically had a bunch of drinking orgies and orgies or whatever. Um, basically, he uh, was devoid of any military interest and was willing to abandon his power to his ministers, and he was left free to pursue his orgies and abashes. <laughs> Therefore, is known as Salim the Drunkard or Salim the Sot, uh, which is very, I guess, a Turkish insult. Which is a neat history character. There's a lot of Christian drunkards, though, if you want to look through history. There's a lot of drunkards. The other thing that I want to do is there's actually an alcoholic beverage called kumis, um, which is a milk alcohol. It's only like 2.5%, which I think we, I almost think about suggesting to Toady to actually um, put in his, uh, in his game because, you know, dwarves have milk. And they milk milk to make cheese, but wouldn't they be better if they made milk alcohol? And that's kumis, K-U-M-I-S, which is a uh, common drink apparently in, in like Mongolia. And they use it with horse's milk. Imagine milking. Actually, there's a picture of them milking a horse. 
it's very difficult. I think they had, in order to milk a horse, you have to have like the, the uh, foal actually touch the mare, so that the mare doesn't freak out while you're mil milking her. <laughs> and that's, I bet that's a really tedious prospect, especially. I don't know, but it's apparently it's popular in Mongolia, and other uh, even in Muslim nations, uh, it's still considered non-alcoholic. It's not. It's not considered an alcoholic beverage. Um, it's only like two point. You'd have to drink a lot to get drunk. It's only like two point five percent alcoholic content, and you'd have to drink a lot to get drunk. Uh, let's see. Our our trader can leave now. We're done with you, and we'll probably have to switch out the traders next round. All right. So they're building our traps to prevent any any. Apparently, the minotaurs. Oh, we're out of refined coal. All right. Saw that message. Uh, U M Q charcoal. All right. Uh, Thirty, because that's the max you can make. Hopefully, they would actually increase that. That'd be very useful. Anyways, I'm all excited. Mostly, I guess I had a lot of activity today, especially with uh, going out to shop. So hopefully, this has been a very entertaining video. I think I'm going to end it now, so I'm afraid that I'm going to lose it at this point. We've gone too far, probably like two hours. And I didn't get a lot done in this video, but I, I talked about what I wanted to talk about. Hopefully, I haven't offended anybody. I, 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 my whole point was, that, you know, those debates that you see on the Internet. But it happens a, lot on, happens a lot on YouTube where, you know, somebody says, we won the war for you. But it's, 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 the truth is, it's half and half. America had a great deal of involvement. The Soviets also had a great deal of involvement. Without both their sides, the war would have turned out a lot different uh, than we would today when we'd probably have a different uh, political outlook. But uh, I don't know. Anyways, we'll probably get into that debate more when we actually play Hearts of Iron 3, especially when we defeat the Soviets, because uh, that's hard to do, actually. Uh, but you can do it. You just have to encircle their armies and complete. Eventually, they're just you destroy so much of them they can't recover and then you just sail on through to the Ural Mountains anyways it's a fun game just like Dwarf Fortress but anyways I'm gonna quit the video now and maybe I'll do a second another second episode tonight it's kinda late but uh, who cares alright so thanks for watching and have a good night